Hi, this is John Okoro. Welcome to this week's auspicious Agile video blog post. 大家好，我是 John Okoro， 欢迎来到本周的吉祥敏捷视频播客。This week we're going to continue our coverage of Agile scaling methods. 本周我们将继续讲述敏捷软件的扩展方法。We started out previously looking at some methods. We are going to look at DAD and Spotify this week. 我们之前讲述了一些方法。Let's do a quick recap of where we've been. We look, took a look at Safe, now in version three, with a sneak peek of version four, one of the leading scaling frameworks out there for Agile. 先让我们快速的回顾一下，我们来看看 Safe 的第三版和第四版。在此之外，有一个领先的框架结构 Agile. Agile. We also looked at Less, which comes in the flavors of Less and Less Huge. For larger teams, larger contexts, and that less again is one of the leading frameworks today. We also looked at the less features and the size of the team and the size of the background set up as less huge. Today, we will look at the less huge framework. So, two of the big frameworks. Now, we're going to take a look at some others. We're going to look at DAD, Disciplined Agile Delivery, by Scott Ambler. And we're going to take a look at Spotify by the Spotify company. So we have two big frameworks. Now let's look at some of the others. Let's look at Dad, which is a standard framework by Scott Ember. And we also look at Spotify and its Spotify company. Dad is a hybrid framework. It has its Spotify company as a hybrid framework. Spotify was created for the Spotify company. It was created for their usage, and it is just secondary that other people happen to use it as well. Dad is a hybrid framework. Spotify is a Spotify company created. It was created for its own use, and then it has been used by other people to make it more popular. So let's begin, as I like to, with the AgileScaling.org's coverage. They give a great blow-by-blow. We will go over agilescaling.org coverage fairly quickly here. You can see the coverage for portfolio, program, team, programming practices, agile engineering practices, inter-team communication, and overall. 好，我们在这里可以很快的浏览一下 agilescaling.org 的网页。你可以看到它的组合、计划、团队、编程实践、敏捷工程实践、跨团队沟通和它的整体。Overall, Dad has given a high level of coverage, and Spotify has given a medium level of coverage. If you would like more details on this table, take a look at AgileScaling.org Ask Matrix. 从整体上看 ，Dad 是处于较高水平的管理 ，Spotify 呢处于中等水平的管理。如果您想详细了解这个页面的细节，请参看 agilescaling.org ask 页面。Now let's take a look at some more details for the DAD framework. The key point is that it's a hybrid framework. While less starts small and safe starts big, DAD starts in the middle. 现在我们就来看一下更详细的 DAD 框架。有一点是，这种 DAD 框架呢，它是一种混合的框架。当 less 启动的时候，它处于一个很小的启动 ；safe 是一个较大的启动，而 dead 则是处在中间。The approach life cycle is going to be very familiar to those of you familiar with waterfall. We start with inception, then construction, then transition. 这种方法，也就是它的这种周期，是我们比较熟悉的过去的这种传统的方法，即从成立到建设，再到过渡。Dad gives you a choice of four life cycles: Agile Basic, Advanced Lean, Continuous Delivery, and Exploratory. It is highly practical and does not adhere to Scrum. You're expected to tailor the framework to your situation, i.e., start in the middle. Dad 呢是提供了四种生命周期的选择，即 Agile Agile 的基础、先进的生产、持续的交互和探索。这是非常实用的，不但它坚持了 Scrum 和呃，同时呢，我们也期待能够为你的具体情况量身定制框架。Dad certification follows a Shuhai approach from Aikido: follow the rule, break the rule, be the rule. 
There are white, yellow, green, and black belts offered in Discipline Agilist certification. 加油的认证呢，遵循和其道守破离的方法，即遵循规则、打破规则和成为规则。在 Agile 的认证里，同时也提供了白色、黄色、绿色和黑色的认证方法。A note on using a DAD. Having so many approaches to use DAD does make it feel a little confusing to get started. I.e., it's not very suitable. 嗯，这么多的方法来使使用 DAD。可能会稍稍令人感觉有一点困惑。Now let's take a look at Spotify. Key here is that Spotify was created specifically for the Spotify company. It comes down to creating a matrix with teams organized into squads and tribes and skilled disciplines aligned using chapters and guilds. Chapters and guilds are similar to communities of practice, which many of you are probably familiar with. 现在我们要来看看 Spotify。Spotify 是 Spotify 公司为它自己的使用而创建的。它归根到底是为了创建一个矩阵，使团队、组织和技术种类都有序的排列。而这种排列的方法可能是大家比较熟悉的一些方法。Squads are similar to scrum teams, though they are not scrum teams. Tribes are limited by the Dunbar number, or 100 people, in order not to become overly complex. There is a limit to the number of people in one grouping that work effectively together. 这种小组类似于 Scrum 团队，虽然它不是真正的 Scrum 团队，它的这种小组的是由类似于邓巴数字，或者认为在限定为一百人以内，以至于不过于太复杂。这种限定人数的数目呢，是是为了一个分组能够更好的、有效的协同工作。Each squad and guild is actually meant to act like its own little business. The chapters and guilds help to hold these little businesses together. 每个小组和行会之间呢，实际上是更像在做自己的事情。这个行会和这个小的分会之间，就可以把这些小的企业联系在一起，小的企业或小的事事业联系在一起。Now this is a mid-sized, roughly 250-person scaling framework that's used at Spotify. It's not very prescriptive and it's fairly easy to use. I will note that a company I saw using this did actually opt to try a more prescriptive approach when they needed to scale up in order to benefit from additional guidance and shoeability. Now we can see this is a medium-sized model. In Spotify, there are approximately 250 people using this framework. It's not very strict, and it's very easy to use. I also noticed that some companies are trying to use this approach 为了选择更好的去尝试更规范的方法，继续扩大范围和规模，他也用一些附加的指导来使其从中受益。So next time we'll take a look at Scrum of Scrums, which is foundational for scaling and is used by many scaling approaches. We will also take a look at Nexus from Scrum.org. 下一次呢，我们将看一看 Scrums 和 Scrums 它的一些基础性的延展，并且呢。我们将看一看 scrums.org 的 nets. Hopefully, some good food for thought on additional agile scaling methods. Until next time, stay agile and thanks for listening. 嗯，希望这些能对你学习敏捷软件有很好的作用。保持灵活性，感谢你的收听。